Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. Thank you for listening to or watching the BlockWeb Beat podcast, recorded on Tuesday 30th of January at about 7pm AEST. On this week's show, we dive into the buoyant rise of the crypto market and Bitcoin's expanding dominance. We shine a light on South Korea's effective combat against crypto romance scams and delve into the stylish realms of Upland season passes. The episode takes a turn into AI, exploring the thin line between innovation and privacy. We also unpack the seismic shifts in the NFT market and Sega's last latest stride in Web3 gaming. Plus, as always, we ground ourselves with some real-world insights with a few doses of reality from the good old meat suit of us. Let's start things off, as always, by taking a look at what's currently happening in some of the crypto markets. Let's have a look here. So this week in the crypto market, the market buoyancy is evident with the global cap hitting $1.67 trillion, a 6% lift from last week. Bitcoin reinforces its market lead, upping its dominance by 2.5% to command 51.1% of the market. The market sentiment is tilting towards greed, with the fear and greed index climbing from 49 to a more confident 59 this week. Navigating through my coin list, Solana rides a significant bullish wave, appreciating by 17.5%, with Avalanche close on its tail at 16%, at a 16% increase. Bitcoin, the good old captain of the market, has also charted a notable 7.8% rise in value over the week. On the other hand, Ethereum has seen a slight contraction of 1.5%. Other noteworthy movements in the coins I cover include Cardano, which has gained a solid 9.1% and Engine, buoyed by a 6.8% increase. Meanwhile, it's steady as she goes for both Ripple and Flow, remaining almost at an even keel with minimal changes over the week. Moving on in the blockchain crypto news. Yes, in a significant move to combat online fraud, 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 sorry, South Korean crypto exchanges have blocked transactions valued at over 82 million US dollars in 2023. All of those have been linked to romance scams. Coin One, a major exchange, played a crucial role, role by halting over 2.6 million in such transactions using an advanced detection system and continuous monitoring. The Financial Supervisory Service, the FSS, has issued warnings about the rise of crypto-related scams on social media, emphasizing the need for public vigilance. The FSS highlighted the common tactics of romance scammers often linked to illicit or fake crypto exchanges, targeting individuals with promises of investment help. And probably a whole lot more, I would imagine. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Coin One shared a notable instance of an elderly customer almost losing his crypto assets to a scammer who was posing as a Japanese salon owner. Thanks to Coin One's alert staff and transaction monitoring, the scam was averted. This proactive stance by crypto exchanges in collaboration with regulatory bodies like the FSS is a critical step in safeguarding the public from increasingly sophisticated online crypto scams it's still very much the wild west out there in the crypto space so proceed with caution of course moving on in upland news this was kind of interesting one kicked off this morning upland has introduced season passes a chic new way to customize your in-game experience with the season pass players can unlock a weekly series of exclusive account link cosmetic items giving them a chance to flaunt their style in the virtual world. These items are not NFTs and cannot be traded, ensuring their uniqueness to the owner's own account. Upland has emphasized self-expression through these com cosmetics are on the way, and they offer up a badge with each pass to add to one's in-game prestige. Prices remain fixed at $6.99 per season, which is very well priced compared to other seasonal um, mobile game passes and this that, and the other thing that are out there. Um, the first pass has become available on January the 30th, which is tomorrow morning, my time. While there was some initial confusion within the community, further details were clarified somewhat through a follow-up YouTube video by X1. Some community members have continued to express concerns, however, about Upland potentially shifting focus from Web3 developments. However, the introduction of these cosmetics is, as I said, a very common practice in mobile games to generate revenue. And of course, it's not mandatory for all of the players to get involved with. As the season unfolds, the true value to, and we're not talking financial value here, of course, we're talking kind of more flex value of these cosmetic drops will become more apparent, potentially adding a layer of rarity and exclusivity to the gamer's experience. Personally, the season pass doesn't captivate my interest at all, but I do recognize its potential in adding some variety 
and of course a new revenue stream for Upland to the game. They do, after all, have to keep the lights on in the office, as they say. It's a watch and see feature for now as we wait the community's reception to this new foray when it all starts dropping. In other Metaverse news, first up, we've got Interpol has issued a warning about the increasing prevalence of crimes in the Metaverse, just like the cryptocurrency markets. Um, so they're highlighting significant challenges in this emerging, emerging digital realm. Key issues include grooming, cyber attacks and theft, compounded by the absence of physical evidence and the multi-jurisdictional nature of virtual worlds. Interpol's report underscores the need for global readiness and cross-border collaboration to combat these complex transnational crimes. The organization emphasizes, emphasizes the importance of equipping law enforcement with the right tools and training to navigate the metaverse's unique challenges and ensure safety and security in the virtual environment. In other metaverse news, Meta Platforms under good old Mark Zuckerberg's leadership is focusing on merging generative AI with its metaverse development. The, this move aims to create AI assistance beneficial for business and content creators. Despite its pivot to augmented reality and virtual reality in 2021, Meta has continued its AI innovations, notably with PyTorch and the language model Llama. The recent consolidation of AI research teams underscores Meta's commitment to generative AI, especially for content creation. Meta's involvement in over 200 innovations with a significant focus on AI indicates its leadership and impact in the AI space. The company's advancements in AI are crucial for its broader vision of the metaverse, offering potential collaboration opportunities for vendors and startups to fill strategic gaps. As Meta navigates the intersection of AI and the metaverse, its position could significantly influence the technological landscape in the coming years. Yes, say so what you want about Mark and Facebook, Meta and all that sort of stuff. It is kind of at the forefront of all that is going on there. In AI news, Google's latest AI update for Android featuring the Bard AI Assistant is set to revolutionize messaging by, get this, analyzing the private messages of you know, participants to enhance user experience, they say. Bard will delve into the context and tone of conversations and assess relationship dynamics, which of course has raised privacy, privacy concerns due to its access to private content. What could possibly go wrong? Anyhow, while Google assures on-device analysis for privacy protection, the AI's ability to understand users' interests and moods open up potential privacy risks. This development marks a significant shift in smartphone privacy, challenging the balance between advanced AI utility and user data security. Users must carefully consider the privacy implications of enabling Bard's message analysis, weighing the innovative, I can never say this word, innovative features against potential risks to their personal information. Yes, be careful what you got on your phone, which is a perfect segue. Well, not really perfect because it's, it's not what you got on your phone. It's just what some of this stuff is capable of. So, yes, also in AI news, X, previously, of course, known as Twitter, has implemented a temporary search ban on Taylor Swift following the viral spread of sexually explicit AI-generated images of the pop star. This action highlights the growing challenge social media platforms face with deep fake technology. These realistic AI-generated images can misleadingly depict public figures in inappropriate and compromising situations without their consent. X's drastic measure to block searches, even legitimate ones about Taylor Swift, underscores the urgency in addressing the misuse of deep fake technology. The incident comes amidst relaxed moderation policies under Elon Musk's leadership, raising concerns about the platform's ability to manage such content effectively. This situation has drawn attention to the broader issue of deep fake abuse in pornographic imagery and political disinformation, emphasizing the need for stricter legislative and platform specific responses to help safeguard individual users' rights and to prevent misuse. And of course, that I believe that was just um, photos and whatnot, but deep fake videos, they're already out there. I know Joe, Joe Rogan's been kind of deep faked a whole bunch in, you know, voice, uh, images, video, the whole kit and caboodle. So yes, definitely. That's definitely the darker side of things. Anyhow, in NFT news, OpenSea, once the leading NFT marketplace is considering 
potential acquisition amid a significant downturn in its market share. Valued at $13.3 billion, OpenSea has faced a steep decline, dropping 96% from its peak in January 2022 and now ranks third in volume. Competitors like Blur and OKX NFT Marketplace, specializing in Bitcoin ordinals, have surpassed OpenSea, raising questions about its market strategy. CEO Devin Finzer acknowledges the possibility of acquisition if the right partner emerges, but clarifies that there are no immediate plans or active search searches underway for acquisition. OpenSea struggle comes despite substantial venture capital support during the 2021 NFT boom. However, its valuation was drastically cut by shareholder Coachu management to 13 point. Uh, 13 million in November, sorry. Despite its large user base and ongoing NFT mints, OpenSea faces challenges, including regulatory restrictions on issuing its own tokens as a US company and pressure to integrate Bitcoin ordinals to retain and grow its user base. Moving on, this could be a big one. This one, I'm long-term Sega fan myself. I was always about the Sega, not the Nintendo as a kid. So let's see what they've got going on. In Web3 Gaming News, Sega. Now, of course, the renowned Japanese gaming company has advanced its Web3 initiatives by partnering with Line Next, Line's Web3 arm, which is their Web3 arm. This collaboration announced in July 2023 aims to integrate Sega's intellectual properties into Dossi Line Next, Next gaming platform. Despite initial misunderstandings about Sega's Web3 plans, the company reaffirms its commitment to exploring Web3 technologies while maintaining a balanced approach. This strategy follows Sega's earlier controversy over environmental concerns related to blockchain game development. The move reflects the broader gaming industry's cautious yet innovative, blah, 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 there's that word again, innovative adoption of Web3 and blockchain technologies to mix community and environmental considerations. And yeah, Nintendo have, kind of did something similar where they're dipping their toe in there with their intellectual property, but not potentially taking big chunks or, you know, high risks uh, directly themselves. Anyhow, what's making in real life news in the meat certiverse? Well, in the Australian meat certiverse news, an Australian bank, Bank West, has recently closed three branches in Western Australia as part of its shift towards an almost solely digital future. The thought of that terrifies a lot of people. And this will affect up to 1.1 million of its customers across the country. The bank has faced criticism, including a case where one poor customer had to drive 130 kilometers to the nearest branch, only to be unable to withdraw any cash. Bankwest, which is owned by Commonwealth Bank of Australia, has been gradually reducing its physical presence with earlier closures in 2022 and 2023. Uh, the Commonwealth Bank CEO, Scott Com confirmed the bank's strategic move towards a digital-first approach, acknowledging that in-person services would become scarcer over time for BankWest customers. Yeah, I don't know when the last time I physically went into a bank. I think it was actually when um, the ATM chewed up my card and I had to go in there and try and sort it out. So it doesn't surprise me in the least. Moving on, in the New Zealand Meet Suitiverse news, this is a weird one. Part of the Head of John Doe sculpture in Palmerston, North New Zealand, depicting a doe looking at a mounted fallow deer head, was stolen, leading to calls for its return. The sculpture, located in the central city, went missing, with the bolts securing it to the ground cut through. Authorities are investigating the theft and seeking to recover the stolen artwork, emphasising its significance as public art for the community. This incident, get this, follows two previous sculpture vandalisms in the region over the past six weeks. What's going on in NZ? And last but not least, in Japanese Mitsubishi news, the average price of new condominiums in central Tokyo has exceeded 100 million yen for the first time ever, reaching 114.83 million yen per unit, marking a 39.4% increase from the previous year. For reference, that's a bit over 770,000 US dollars. This surge in prices is attributed to luxury properties and rising construction material costs. Now, the trend of increasing prices around the area can be linked to the low interest rate housing that's available and a decrease in suitable land for construction. Additionally, buyers from high earning double income households played a notable role in driving up prices. However, the supply of condominiums has decreased with the number of new units going on sale dropping 9.1% 
to 26,866 units, the lowest level in about three decades. And that, my friends, that's the beat for this block web week and a glimpse into some of what's currently making the news inside, around and outside of the metaverse and the Mitsudiverse, of course. If you'd like to get yourself involved in any of the Upland Down Under Metatainment Productions, or if you have an Upland NFT or Metaverse product, service, or event to promote, then send me, Ben68, a DM, and or get yourself into the NBA server, which is linked in the description. Later. <laughs>